Awesome. Well, I am still very, very wet. Um, my shorts, I'm pretty sure I could wring them out. Um, so thank you, everyone, for your water balloons. It was much appreciated. Um, look, let's not make that a regular occurrence. <laughs> but hey, okay, 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 we could do it again. We'll just have to do it to Emma next time, you know? Yeah, come on. Um, all right. Well, I am blessed to, to be in this situation where I get to, to pastor you, all of you. Um, and I just want to thank you all, um, first and foremost, for, for accepting me with open arms. Um, as we all know that Dubsy was here for five years um, and he left the ministry, um, he left you guys um, to go on to do family things. And yeah, Lord, we just, we, I really respect Dubsy and, and everything that he did. And yeah, we're looking to go, to go upwards from the, from the, from the platform that Dubsy, Dubsy gave us here at Echo. Um, so yeah, tonight I just want to share about my heart for, for you guys and for Echo um, as a, as a whole um, and where, where this year's what this year's going to look for us look like for us and and what my heart is behind the reason. So, have you ever moved house? Yeah. yeah? Who's ever moved house? Oh gee. <laughs> Jackson over there is loving it. Um, so, I moved house last week. <laughs> um, so this is a very fresh story for me, but. So if you've ever moved house, you know the process. So you pack up all of your stuff, um, you put it in a car or in a truck or in something, and you move it to your new house, which for us was half an hour away, which was really inconvenient. Um, but nothing like what Dubsy would have went through moving state. I do not envy that man at all in that, in that regard. But so we moved house, we, we packed everything up, put it all in trailers and trucks and moved it there, dumped it all, went back, got more stuff. I did eight loads to this new house with a truck, with my ute and trailer. It was a lot. Um, and then you got to unpack it all, which that is the worst part by far, um, in my opinion. I still have a lot of things still in boxes, uh, which I've just shoved away. So we'll, we'll sort that out another time. But our new house is much smaller, so we had to cull a few things. Um, for example, I culled my wardrobe, uh, because this one, this house, new house has built-in wardrobes. So I don't need the wardrobe anymore. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, the thing, with, the thing with moving house is it's the physical move, right? So you're moving, you're sleeping in a different place now. You, you no longer have the keys to that house. You can't, you can't wander back in there and unlock the door because you don't have the keys anymore. Your new keys are not going to do that. Um, so, for example, when you, when you move, you, yeah, you, can't, you can't access that house anymore. And... This year at Echo, I wonder if you guys will, will ponder this. Between the physical move that I, that I personally have experienced last week to a spiritual move. Do you, guys, do you guys see a spiritual move happening this year for you? Is there, is there something that, that you're looking for, something, a different space that you're wanting to move into um, in your life and in your journey with God? Is there, is there space, like, is there a wardrobe at this new house that is now so, like, you've got, you had a wardrobe, but now it's built into this new house in your spiritual realm. So, I'm not explaining this very well. I'm very sorry. Um, do you, the, the basis, do you want to grow this year? Do you want to move this year out of your old space, out of your old habits and ways into a new way? Do you want to grow this year? We're going to, we're going to jump into the Bible right now. Um, so we're going, to go to Luke, we're going to go to Acts 2 verses 42 to 47. So what's happening in this, in this passage is that this is the beginning of the church. This is the beginning of the early church after Jesus. So Jesus went up to heaven and then the disciples were all like, all right, we need to keep doing this. So we're going to start this thing called church. Um, and this was, this was very much the, the pillars, the most important parts of the church and what, what they do. 
So we're going to read that together. Um, if you've got phones or anything, Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, of, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. My heart for Echo this year is contained in this scripture. It is, it is 100% rooted in this. Um, and I just want to say right now that I am here to, to pastor you for your eternity. I want to see you guys in heaven. I want to see you all, every face of you in heaven. So that is my heart, that you all would come to know Jesus in a personal way, that, that we would have that relationship. And my heart is for, for you, for us all, to move to a new place, to a new house this year. And to be completely unashamed and on fire for God. On fire and living an everyday faith. Within this scripture, they saw a spiritual change. um, When they put their trust in God. So it says in in the scripture that the the headlines are, they were devoted. They met together daily. They ate together. They prayed together and privately they prayed together and privately. They praised God and they were generous. I don't know about you, but this is, this, is what, this is what we see at church. This is what we see here at Echo. This is what, this is what Echo is based around, um, these, these values. And my heart for Echo this year, as I've said it, we want to step into the new. Step into the new. We've, we've been in 2022. We've been in 2021. And we're going to step into 2023 ready for more. Ready for more of what God has in store for each and every one of you. And I believe that. And, and I'm, very, I'm so excited about what God is going to do this year through Echo and through you guys in, in every space that you're in. My heart is that we would have an everyday faith. In this room, my heart is that everyone would have an everyday faith. So, I'm not a good reader. I am a terrible, terrible reader. And I am not like Ella Stevens who read 19 books over the holidays. I, I read half a book. <laughs> so, we can't, all, we can't all be Ella Stevens. But I'm a terrible reader. <laughs> I, just, I just can't get my head in a book. Um, but when I was younger, I, was a gr- I loved reading. I would get lost in these mystery books. There's this one series that I read, which one of the books, they, they lost an alpaca, and they had to find out who stole the alpaca. It was great. I loved it. Um, but, however, my life quickly got busy, and I, I sort of forgot how to read. Um, and I, and I, lo- no, I didn't forget... <laughs> Thanks, man. I am a carpenter, but I, I can read, I promise. <laughs> I promise I can read. <laughs> now nah, there's words on here, Josh. We good, we good. <laughs> um, fast forward a couple of years to when I, when I finished school. Um, I, was, I, was a, I was a church kid, um, and, which meant I was around church and everything um, every Sunday. Um, and I would go to, go to all of these youth camps every year. So I would, would go to a minimum of three youth camps every year, which, which I loved. Um, but every time I was at one of these youth camps, God would say to me, he said, Tim, I want you to learn how to read again. I want you to learn how to read books again. I want you to learn how to, to read books so that I can teach you more. And every time I went away, I was like, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll I'll learn how to read more. That's so that's fine. I'll just I'll get a book. I get twenty pages in, and then for then don't pick it up for the rest of the year. Um. And then I was like, okay. 
I, I, I just really can't do this. Maybe I just can't, maybe I just can't read books. But then after this one encounter with God, I was sitting there and I was, I was convinced this time. I was like, okay, I am going to read my Bible every day. Every day. And this took a, a discipline, which I didn't think I had. I woke up an extra 15 minutes early every day, specifically to read my Bible. And that may not sound like much, but when you're waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you want that extra 15 minutes sleep. Um, and so I went on, and this become part, became a part of my daily rhythm, where I would get up, I would make my coffee in the morning, and I would sit down and read my Bible. I went chapter by chapter every day until I finished the New Testament. And then I kept going. And this was something that I never thought I could do because I'd failed so many times to to learn how to read books again. But God really challenged me in that. And he said, I want you to have an everyday faith. I want you to have a relationship with me every day of the year. And every day, I want you to put me into your day at some point. And I decided that was the first thing. This is how I have an everyday faith, is by taking time out, getting up early and reading my Bible. And this may not be you, something that that ticks your boxes, something, that, something that's not, not something for you. you. You may be great at reading, like Ella, that you just read. But it was a struggle for me. But it's, it's all about how, it's, it's about how you can have that relationship with God every, every day. It may be Bible reading. It may be worship music. It may be praying. It may be reading books about the Bible. It may be connecting with God in nature. But God calls us to have an everyday faith. And this is my heart for Echo is that you guys would not, you all would not be Christians just in this building. That we all, that we would see God move outside of this building, would see God in our everyday lives. To live a devoted life, a faith convinced, a, a faithful life, convinced by the gospel of Jesus, to live it out every single day. I want us to live out, live out our lives as the early church did, where they were devoted, they prayed together, they ate together, they worshipped, they were generous. That is my heart for Echo. And, and I want you guys to hear that, that that's not something that I'm demanding you to do, because that's not, that's not who I am and that's not who God is. But it's an opportunity to grow, it's an opportunity to go deeper with God, and in something that's real and tangible. So what does this look like for us and for you? It looks like being surrounded by, by people who build you up, by build, people who build you up in your faith. It looks like unashamedly being a Christian in your school by changing or growing in the way that you see and are seen by others. Because followers of Jesus are meant to stand out. We're meant to stand out. Jesus stood out. He had people following him. All of his apostles had people following them because they were different. And I, my, my challenge, my call right now is for us to be different. For us to have a relationship with God that is so unashamed that, that, it, that it radiates. That it radiates in everything that we do. My heart this year not only comes from, from, from me, but it's something that Dubsy was building even before me. And I just want to honor that. And I want to say that I want to challenge you to this year to not stay where you are, to not stay in your old season of life, but to move forward, to go somewhere fresh, to go into a new house this year. Which brings me to my second point. Now, some of you would know is 
I'm not only a youth pastor, but I'm, but I'm a carpenter. And I, people say that I'm following in Jesus' footsteps, and I'm okay with that. Up until the part where he got crucified. Not a fan of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> For all those who missed the larger just said I wasn't 30 yet. <laughs> Nearly. Come on, mate. <laughs> so, in being a full-time carpenter, like Jesus, but I'm not Jesus. Um, in being a full-time carpenter, I was constantly outside, and which which sounds great for for people stuck in school, for you guys all stuck in school, suckers. I was outside playing in the fun, the fun summer air. Um, but it's not as fun as you think it is. Um, I was there were many many days um, where it was the Australian summer, which is not fun to be outside in when it's 38 degrees. And you're on a house foundation, which is radiating the heat upwards, making it feel like 45. And you are building a house. It's not fun. Um, But this year, my heart for Echo is that that we would increase the temperature here. That we would increase, not not with the AC in the building, but with our journey with God. Is that our journey with God, we would turn up the temperature. Make it, make our faith hotter and shine brighter. This comes directly from Acts, what we read earlier. In verse 42, it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to prayer. They were actively trying to grow their faith. They were actively trying and pursuing God in a way that that not only sharpens you, but makes makes you hotter, makes you hotter for God. And, makes, and turns you on fire. What does turning the temperature look like in our, in our terms? So turning the temperature looks like this. This is how we turn it up. We, we be prepared for God to turn up the temperature. For God to turn our spiritual dial up. And if you have a trackie, trackies, a hoodie, and a blanket on, when it's hot, you're not going to want to turn up the temperature. You're not going to make, want to make the room hotter if you're already warm and hot. So my challenge today is, what is something that, that is making you, it is something that is challenging you? What are the things that are keeping you hot right now that are not of God? What are things you need to throw off so that God can turn up your temperature, so that you can turn up your spiritual temperature? What are some things that are holding you back right now This year, I, in this spiritual time where, we, where we're turning it up, we want to throw off the hindrances that are keeping us. This may be worries about tomorrow. It may be past experiences. It may be shame. It may be guilt. All of these things can stop us wanting to turn, to, to go deeper. Stop us wanting to, to be more on fire for God. But, we, but this year... My heart is for us to let go, to throw off these things and allow God to do what He does. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Cast all your anxieties on Him. John 3, verse 17 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God's not a condemning God. He wants to see you grow. He wants to see you throw off these things. And here at Echo is a space to do that. Be prepared. This is my next point. Be prepared to be a bit uncomfortable. Because we all know that sometimes heat can be a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be, it can, it can stop growth because you want, you want to stay where you are or you want to turn it back down. Be prepared to be uncomfortable. We might need to make some hard decisions. So 
some hard decisions about friends, some hard decisions about coming to youth or not coming to youth, some hard decisions about coming on Sundays and not coming on Sundays. There might need to be some sacrifices that need to be made in order for you to turn up your spiritual temperature, to turn up the temperature for God, to get on fire. But this isn't a decision that we just make tonight. This is an active decision to say, I want to follow God daily. I want to be on fire every day. Not just on Fridays when I come to youth, but every single day in every situation, in every circumstance that we're in, that we would be on fire for God. It's an active decision to change, to follow, to grow, to have an everyday faith. And only you can decide if you want to. Only you can decide to throw off your hindrances, to throw off things that may be, may be stopping you from wanting to turn up your temperature, to turn up the temperature this year. I can't make that decision for you. I can't make the decision for you. So my question tonight is, how's your spiritual temperature? How's your relationship with God? Because I know that God wants nothing more than you, than every single one of you in the building. So how is your spiritual temperature? And how can you turn it up this year? What are some things that are coming to your mind right now that are holding you back? They may not even be holding you back, but God might be saying, I want you to go deeper this year. What's one thing that you can do to tighten your relationship with Jesus this year? And so one thing we're going to do right now is, is this year at Echo, I want, we want to facilitate a time for growth, a time for prayer, and a time for you guys to respond to that. Respond to the call of turning up the temperature, of, of going deeper, of having that everyday faith, being on fire for God. So right now, as the band come up, There are people in this room who, who have things and have, have things. And I'm, I'm included in this. I want to turn up my temperature this year. I want to grow this year. And so as, as the leaders and, and things come up the front, I want to challenge you guys. Do you want to turn up the temperature this year? Do you want to have that everyday faith? 